Hey folks, good evening. My name is Greg Simber and I'm going to be helping y'all tonight with the second edition of Quarantine Cuisine. And bear with me, I'm in a kitchen that I'm remodeling, so I'm not going to show you very much of it tonight as I get going. But as I do get going tonight, what I'm going to try and do is put together a really quick, simple chili. And it's really basically four ingredients and a little bit of beef. So let's go ahead and get started because I don't want to take up too much of your time. First, what you're going to notice up here is that I actually browned some hamburger. I uh, threw in a little bit of onion and pepper, but honestly, that's kind of an optional thing. It was just some stuff that I had left over in the fridge, and I thought I'd, I'd put it in there for a little bit of color. But the first thing you do is basically just brown this ground beef. So we've got the ground beef here. I'm going to go ahead and drop this right into the skillet. So pretty straightforward kind of thing. And I've got this on low heat right now. This chili is actually kind of nice because I'm guessing that as students, many of y'all, and I might crank it up to about six, six, if you can get an idea of that. But basically, this is a pretty simple chili, and I'm guessing that, that a lot of y'all were stu or are students. I know I used to be a student, and what I found is, is that sometimes it's not being gourmet that's really the most important thing, but sometimes what's really the most important thing is just having something that's kind of simple and kind of quick that actually makes pretty good sense. So I've got this on basically about medium heat right now, and these are the hamburgers. It's already been browned. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab now a can of tomatoes. I'm going to try and, you know, not give a whole lot of attention to the labels on this, but this is basically just a 28-ounce can of tomatoes. Tomatoes. Pretty straightforward kind of thing. And from there, I'm going to jump in with a jar of salsa. And this is actually, again, just a 24-ounce jar of salsa. This is the hot. I kind of like it a little bit hot, frankly. Um, I don't know that this is going to give you all of the spice that you're going to want, but this is the beginning of it. And then from there, I'm actually going to grab a little bit of kidney beans. And these are just some light red kidney beans, pretty straightforward kind of thing. Drop them in. And so this doesn't overflow. I'm just going to start to stir this up a little bit. Pretty straightforward kind of a thing. Um, beans, hamburger, uh, and salsa. And you can pick the salsa to the, the degree of heat that you like. You can pick the beans. Maybe you like dark red kidney beans. Maybe you like light red kidney beans. Doesn't really matter which one it is, as long as there's some kind of a bean in there. And then from there, as we just, again, kind of stir this up, um, all you've got to do is basically simmer it. But there's one last can that I wanted to put in here, and this is actually just white corn. White corn. So the chili itself, um, give you an idea, the salsa is probably going to be, I don't know, $2 a bottle. The tomatoes, depending upon the brand, probably 2 or two fifty. The kidney beans are going to be under a dollar, in fact. And then the white corn, and you can use any kind of corn, or this could actually be something that's a little bit optional. Um, just depends on what your taste is. That's probably, depending upon the brand, going to be about a dollar or two. And then with a couple of dollars of hamburger, this is just a little bit more than $10. And you can see, this was a pretty big skillet when I put it on here. And all you have to do now is basically just let this chili simmer. Pretty straightforward kind of a thing. Um, I'm going to turn it up and just let this start to boil. And I'm going to try and clear off a little bit of space here by removing some of these cans that I just emptied. And I'll just keep the camera on this for now. The other piece, though, with this is that to save us a little bit of time, I made a batch of this prior to actually, um, obviously, sitting with y'all. And that's actually what's in this pot over here. This is actually going to cook down really really nice and I'm gonna grab my scoop here so that you can kind of take a look at this although it's a jar of salsa although it's a jar of canned tomatoes and although it's a jar or a can of corn or a can of beans really really simple it's got a really nice flavor doesn't really taste like it came from a can and it really takes maybe five minutes to brown the ground beef takes maybe I don't know 15, 20 minutes to let it simmer once it gets to a boil. And you can see the steam coming off of this as, as we, we get going. Now, I'm going to go ahead and dish some of this up. And bear with me because it is a little tricky trying to uh, film and uh, serve at the same time. But this is actually the chili right here. And like I said, it's got a really nice little flavor to it. It's 
chunky. Um, it's got some, some juice to it, of course. I mean, really simple, quick and easy little thing. Of course, you know, some folks are going to like it a little bit hotter. And I'm going to be honest with you, uh, sometimes it's not just the chili, but it's in fact what you put on the chili that kind of makes a big deal. Now, you may see some chocolate and some candy in there. Don't get worried just yet. I want to come back to that. But obviously, one of the most basic things that you can do with chili is kind of slather on some, some, some grated cheese. Pretty straightforward kind of a thing. Um, no real issues as far as that's concerned. I actually like to add a little bit of raw onions on the top. And again, the onions seem like they have a different uh, kind of flavor, depending upon when they're raw as opposed to when they're cooked. Depending upon how hot you like it too, one of the other things that you can actually do with this, I like to drop the jalapenos on top as well because I like a little bit of crunch in this, maybe is probably the best way of saying it. And when you get a little bit of crunch and a little bit more heat, uh, people maybe will have a little bit of a warning there that, that in fact this is going to be a little bit hotter. So this is the first thing. And this is just a nice simple bowl of chili. We can obviously add a a spoon and maybe a, a, a dollop of sour cream right on top there, and there you go. Now, if you want to be a little bit fun with this, and I mean, come on, let's face it, we can't really leave the house, so we got to have fun with something. One of the things that I also like to do, maybe if you've got kids, or maybe if you are a kid, is in fact, I like to just put some corn chip scoops in there. Who needs the spoon, in fact, when you can actually just eat the corn chips that, that, that in fact go with it? And this is something that presents real nice. It's something that's really, really good. It's something that will bring a smile to somebody's face. And as I was saying, sometimes that, uh, that idea of playing with our food a little bit, especially now, might be kind of a big deal. I'm going to pull this off to the side. And you're going to notice up here, I've also got a really big hunk in baked potato. Now, this baked potato is another way that you can actually play with chili. And bear with me, I, I did a little bit of work today as, as we were getting ready for this tonight. And you'll notice I took a baked potato that was basically that size, baked it for about an hour, uh, drizzled some, uh, some butter on there so that it's already melted in, and then, in fact, threw um, a little bit of ground up sea salt on there as well. I, I used to work with Cracker Barrel when I was younger, and what I found, Cracker Barrel would always stress on some of the smaller details of life and cooking, and in fact, one of them was making sure that you baked the potatoes versus microwaving them. You put it in the oven for about an hour, maybe at 425, and guess what? You've, you've got your potato. Uh, again, just cut it in half, kind of sh uh, smashed it out a little bit, a little bit of butter, olive oil, a little bit of, of, of sea salt. And you know, one of the things that's actually a really nice touch with a baked potato is, in fact, to put a little bit of chili on top. And again, as we kind of play with this, you can throw the same cheese on there like you would with a baked potato. Not only could you throw the cheese on there, but again, you could dollop up a little bit of sour cream or some of the jalapenos. And in fact, you've got a, a nice little piece here. So this is something that, that you could eat on the side. This is something that you could eat as a meal. This is something, in fact, that, that could be a lunch or dinner. So you got regular old chili, maybe with some corn chips or, or some crackers of your choice. You've got this idea of a smashed potato with chili and cheese and, and, and obviously a little bit of sour cream. There's one other thing that, that you can do, and maybe this is something that some of y'all will have heard about. Um, maybe some of you haven't, but, but there's this thing that's actually called Cincinnati chili. And I know that everybody is going to have some spaghetti in their house, right? Everybody's got skettis. Well, one of the basic things that you can do with, uh, with the chili, in fact, is in Cincinnati, they throw it right over their pasta. Um, sometimes maybe people get a little bit tired of spaghetti. Um, chili on top of it, like this Cincinnati chili, uh, is actually a good thing. Now, let me stress to you. I'm not saying that I've made Cincinnati chili here because I absolutely haven't done that. But what you can do, again, is you've got the chili over the, uh, the pasta. And, in fact, what you can do going from there is you can drop a, a good helping of cheese right in fact on right in fact on the chili and i'll just go ahead and drop it right in from the bag here so you get a good sense i mean you can dollop it on there pretty good 
The raw onions, in fact, are another touch that, in fact, goes with this idea of Cincinnati chili. So you've got all this together. And what they call this is there's a three-way, a four-way, there's a five-way. And three-way chili is actually chili beans, um, chili with beans over the pasta. Uh, four-way is actually chili with beans and cheese over the pasta. And five-way is actually going to be onions on top of all of it. And you can dollop it on there really, really high. And, and these are three nice little touches. Now, to kind of go back, I'm at about the 10-minute mark of this video. You can kind of see how this is basically beginning to boil now. You can see that it's beginning to kind of take the shape of the chili that we just had. So as you look at this, it's coming together pretty, pretty nice. And again, you know, some folks might are going to have different tastes, especially being stuck in the house. You know, if you can make chili or if you can put it over a baked potato or if you can make it into a kind of a sexier spaghetti, for lack of a better word, this is probably something that's kind of a, a good thing. And it's never a bad idea to maybe throw a little bit of garlic toast in on some of these as well. I'm going to leave you with